We'll start out in the software asset workspace. We'll go down to license operations, then to user subscriptions. This will be where the 365 data is going to be coming in. Then we'll go to our product documentation. As you can see here, this is just the kind of backs into it. We're looking at 365 integration, and then actually looking at the integration part as far as the steps in order to connect to Azure AD. Let's first open up the web browser, the apps registration page. The whole time I'll be going back and forth between a 365 documentation and a 365 portal. I'll select new registration. And then I'll put a name in the registration for an application. Just put down just Panzerella test. Then I'll select just the multi-tenant one without um, the personal one, just the middle one there, and we'll register. So then we'll go back to the overview and we'll bring up just notepad, just so something we can reference. And we'll select all this kind of information here so we can put into the service out instance later. I'll just kind of quickly clean it up a little bit just so I know what values go where as far as what's the client ID and what's the tenant ID. So we'll, we'll set that aside for another time. And we'll go back to the documentation and then we'll look at the certificates. So go back to the portal and now I'll go ahead and um, let's see, manage and certificate and secrets. Okay. So go ahead and add a client secret. Just enter description, just select expiration, you know, six months. Just put the pan descri description as uh, just pan secret. And then we'll select add. And what we'll do is we'll go back into the 365 portal and we'll copy the value and yeah, the value field. Um, and what we'll do is we'll eventually just put that in the notepad as well, and we'll just label it. Just so again, when we go to the Come Service Now side, we we can have this data really available in order to just easily copy and paste it in the instance. No, yeah, we don't need secret ID. We'll, we just need that value field. Just double checking. We'll go to API permissions. And then we'll add a permission. So we want to select from the Microsoft APIs is the Microsoft graph. And we'll select application permissions. And then we want to select two things. Uh, reports.readall and user.readall. So we'll find reports first, which is alphabetical, come down, select yeah, readall, and then we're gonna find user readall. Yeah, user readall. And then click add permissions. And you'll see me going back and forth. A lot of it just goes slow just to make sure that you input it correctly because redoing it is kind of a pain, uh, but just doing it once slow is, is really the way to do it. Just really making sure that you input everything correctly. You want to select grant add-in for consent if you have the status values uh, presenting a yield symbol. So then now we're on to the next section. We're on to the Power BI read-only API. 
So this will get us kind of that optimization information. And we're just, again, reading through the documentation just to understand it. And so the first part is around creating a security group. And so in my instance, we already have a security group with all the different members in it. But obviously there's documentation for if you want to create a new security group, we're just going to create or just uh, use the existing one. What we'll want to do is we want to first copy Azure Active or Azure Active Directory, then navigate it to it in that search bar. And then we'll go to select Azure Active Directory. And we'll go back to documentation. And what we want to do is just manage groups. And instead of creating a new group, I think we're just going to uh, just double check one of the groups already created just to see the members that associate with it. And we're going to add a new member uh, linking back to the application we just created. Yeah, so ITAM all access. We'll go and actually select again, add members, and we're going to search for the application that we just created. So I don't see the list, but it says that it's not showing. It only shows like the first 50 or so. So we'll just use that search bar um, to find it. So we'll just put up in the search bar, just like um, to search your application for me. So it'll be Panzerella. Go ahead and select it. I'll hit select. And whenever you add something in Azure AD, it always takes a little bit, probably maybe 10 seconds in order to actually register an update in the portal. So you'll see me refreshing it a bunch. Um, but again, it's just to confirm that that uh, that record was actually uh, included. So this next part is really an optional um, effort where we're just again validating that the uh, Power BI admin permissions are not set. Right, We don't want the permissions in the Azure portal. So we're just going to go ahead and verify the applications don't have the following permissions. So go back to the home page and then we'll navigate down to enterprise applications. So then we'll locate and select our application. So you can scroll through it or you can just do control F like I did and just search for the application name. And we'll go ahead and select that application. And we'll go down to permissions. And then as you can see here that there's no permissions. So again, we're just validating that we don't have any permissions for this application. So now let's go ahead and select that Power BI link. That'll bring us to the Power BI application. We'll just enter in our email address, put in our credentials, and that will bring us to the Power BI portal. And we'll go to the top right and select Admin Portal. And then we want to do, we want to select the, the tenant settings. Let's say. So we're going to go down to the admin portal. Again, we'll just use control F just to make it easy on ourselves. Looking for admin, we have admin API settings. And we want to select allow service principles to use read only Power BI settings. And we already actually had our, our, our group in there. So that's all set, our security group. So then as a next step, we'll have to go into the Microsoft Admin Portal again and unselect display concealed user information. So I'll select the little hyperlink. This will bring me back to the portal. And then from there, I want to go to settings, services, org settings. So settings, org settings. 
And then I believe it's yeah, down to reports. So we'll select reports. And then we want to deselect the display concealed user group make group box uh, checkbox. So I can deselect that and select save. And then we'll go down to the Microsoft uh, 365 integration. So then the next step is really all in the ServiceNow instance. This is where we're actually going to create the integration profile for ServiceNow to communicate to the 365 portal. So we'll navigate back to our ServiceNow instance. We'll go to Direct Integration Profiles, select New. And then we'll select that Office 365 integration profile. We'll just uh, input the first display name. We'll just copy uh, the description here. Obviously, you can create your own, but um, we'll just can copy it from the documentation. We'll just do four pans. And this is where we'll bring up that information that was input in the notepad that was from the Azure portal. So the first one is the client ID. So that's the application client ID. So we'll copy those values and then input it in the ServiceNow instance. Again, just double checking things. And then auth application, that's automatic, so we need to worry about that. Uh, the tenant name, so the global unique identifier. So that's the tenant ID. So that's that directory tenant ID we want to copy. So we'll copy those values and again, input in the instance and the tenant name or ID. Nothing else needs to be inputted here and we'll go ahead and select submit. So after we submit it, then we can check the documentation, but uh, what we'll do is we'll go into the auth application record. So we'll do open record by selecting the eye icon and then we're going to want to input our client secret in here again from that notepad that we, we got from earlier. Yeah, especially the, the, this stage right here, um, I'm just taking my time to inputting the fields correctly, making sure I understand the documentation. Um, just because troubleshooting this kind of things is usually pretty difficult. So if you're if you're confident in how you set it up and you didn't rush it, um, then it's just one less thing to worry about when the, when the troubleshooting process if it were to happen. So I'll go to my notepad and bring over that client secret value. And we'll input in the client secret and then we'll select update. Now, the next step is we want to validate that integration was successful and we brought over the data that we were looking for. So we'll go down to documentation. And this is just about reclamation rules. This is about setting up uh, you know, the rule to say, you know, what is low usage? So you get to find that based on your organization's um, needs as far as you know, 30 days, 60 days, or 90 days about usage to actually reclaim that user from the portal to free up a license. But we'll go down into just verifying the Office 365 integration. And what you want to do is we'll go back in the instance in the instance workspace, and then we'll come down to license operations. And then at the beginning of this, we saw that the user sub subscription data was not populated, right? Because we didn't have an integration, integration made, obviously. So when we come under user subscription, hopefully the data will be there. Nice. And so as you can see, now that the integrations have been made, we populated these users automatically from the 365 portal. And with that, we get what product they're using, what components they're using of 365. And what we'll do is we'll input entitlements in order to get compliant petition. And then the system will also run some optimization opportunities as well.